Hi, I'm Mark, and you're watching Mark's Astro Journey. In today's video, I'm just going to talk about this briefly. It's iOptron iGuider Compact Auto Guider System. And so I have the Gem 28 mount, the iOptron Gem 28 mount. And I noticed that they have an iGuider that's made to work on it. And so in this video, I'm not planning to go into it in depth how to set up the eye guider or an in-depth how to use PHG2 guiding. All I plan to do is just give you an idea of how well does this iOptron eye guider do with PHG2 guiding. So I'll show you a few things about it. I'll also show you the PHG2 guiding software with it connected so you can see the nudges that are going on as it's auto guiding once it gets started. And I thought Someone else who has a Gem 28 mount or another iOptron mount might be interested in it because of the way it uh, conveniently mounts on the side of the mount. It's 120 millimeter. Here's the camera and also where you plug in the USB cable. And this mount was already attached to it when it came out of the box that slides in the mount base. So I remove the cover so you can just see the lens. Here you can see the mounting bracket already installed. It's on the side there on the center. And here's a view looking at it straight on from the side. You can see the two Allen screws that attach it to the side of the dovetail Vixen base. When you go to put this on your mount, this bracket that mounts on the side of this uh, Vixen dovetail uh, base, this just slides, you notice this uh, shape here on the bottom, and this just slides in this slot, this groove. And then once you have it in position, you just tighten down this small set screw that's on top. And it sits right beside your telescope. Your telescope sits up here, right? And then the USB cable just plugs in right here. And here are a few quick views of the eye guider installed with the telescope. So you can kind of see the spacing between the tube and the eye guider. Before starting to do any guiding, I usually set up the focus with the batten off mask. And here you can see I have that uh, done already. And here I've already centered up and aligned a star in sharp cap. And I synced to alignment on my handheld controller. And I'm going to go over to PHD, PHD2 guiding and see if I can get the guiding going so we can see what that looks like. So I've already been through the software installation and configuration for PHD2 guiding. And when you first open it up, you want to connect all your equipment by clicking on this button. Since I've already been through the configuration, here I can just click on connect all in the dialog box. I'm going to start looping to get some exposures. So I've opened the PHD2 guiding software, connected the equipment, started looping, and also clicked on auto select star. So I'll click on start guiding to get it going. Now that the guiding has started, we'll see um, how well it looks like it's tracking. If it's having to make very minor 
adjustments or it's making huge adjustments. So we'll give it a little bit of time here and watch that. So far, for the most part, it's doing pretty good. I see the one spike there that was near 0.4, and it does show the peak of, um, no, a peak of 0.69 on RA and a peak of 0.33 on deck. Overall, it's looking pretty good. It's being pretty consistent. It's not jumping up and down, you know, non-stop. I think with that you know, staying on track close, that close, those nudges are very slight. I would feel pretty good about this tracking the star properly and being able to capture a pretty decent image. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, one of the things I noticed in using this Ioptron iGuider is you'll notice here that there's a red ring and this tightens down the focusing. So the end part turns. Once you loosen this red ring, the end part of this uh, guide scope turns and that's how you adjust your focus for the guide scope. What I noticed is some nights if I fine tune that focus and watch in PhD2 guiding to get the peak uh, value higher on the star it's locked in on. It does pretty well and I don't have to ever adjust it again. But I have had other nights where um, depending on which object I moved from, which seems a little odd to me because once you get your telescope normally in focus, it seems like that's set. You know, once you get your your telescope focused, I usually lock the dual focuser and I don't have to refocus um, that night. But with this, it seems like if I move from one um, deep sky object to a different one or, you know, another part of the sky, I don't really know what it is. If it's maybe um, just the stars are fainter or the density of the light's different. But it seems like a few times I've had to adjust this after I move from one, you know, like nebula or whatever galaxy or cluster to a different one because it seemed like, you know, it wasn't, it was kept losing the star it had selected. And so as you start guiding, it's losing it and then going back to guiding, losing it, which isn't any good, right? Um, one other thing I will say is, this is like in a lot of people's tutorials about PhD2 guiding. It seems to me like, I think I've heard this, and it seems to me from my experience so far, if you change the exposure time or the gain, which you can set both of those things. One you set directly in PhD2, PhD2 guiding. The other, this Ioptron, opens a small dialog and it has the other setting there um, for the, the, uh, the gain that you can set. And so those two you might have to tweak with. That's what I've found is if you tweak with those settings after you re reposition to um, target another object, sometimes you do have to do a a retweaking of those. Well, if you do that, 
with PhD2 guiding, you're going to have to recalibrate. If you change those settings, I mean, maybe some people get away with it and they don't have to recalibrate. But I've noticed like if I went from one second to one and a half seconds or whatever adjustment I made or increased the gain, it seems like the calibration is off after that. Um, I don't know. If you have a different experience, uh, I'd love to hear your comments, your feedback, because, you know, we can all learn from each other. So I hope this video was helpful. If you were looking at the iOptron iGuide scope, the iGuider auto guide system, um, all that comes with this is there's a little bag with some, you know, hardware, like little screws, and also the USB cable, and this guider. So that's pretty much all that comes with that, uh, it's call it a system, auto guider system, but that's what came in the box. Clear skies.